All right, we'll try and get through this. If I have any more issues, I'm sure Heath is on call. His rates are a bit exorbitant, but I can afford them. And so what I'm going to try and do tonight in the time allowed is build a switch. And I pre-made all the parts and pre-filed them and and have them all ready and I'll explain how I did that because I've got other parts that are in the process. So I'll bring up this uh, other shot and see if I can explain it. So Fast Tracks makes these printable templates and this is for a number five and HO scale. I'm going to use a code 83 rail. Uh, I'm using PC ties and I've used Elmer's glue to hold down the the printout on the home soap and then I've used spikes to hold on the PC ties which I've cut to length. The PC ties are in strategic locations to cover the frog and the points before and after and give the switch enough support when I'm done that I can pull the spikes out and then I can place this on the layout and then fill in the rest with wooden ties. So we'll show you some of the tools that uh, we're going to use and these are fast track tools. So here's the point form tool and there's their price. These will probably make upwards of hundreds of switches each. And the other one I suggest getting is their stockade tool. And the stockade tool cuts the notch for the points in the outside rail. And then of course, uh, you're gonna wanna use uh, gauges and uh, and then there's some uh, the other fast track tools that we'll be using tonight. We'll be using some of their solder. We'll be using uh, good of their soldering tips. Mark tool car. This is a handy little device that lets you see down through the uh, cars using the uh, fast track special flux. It's rosin core. It's good for track. And of course, the Xeron real nippers. And then they also make these point shaping files that uh, are very handy. And then also the PC ties they sell for turnouts or for regular track. And if you want, you can use a rail roller. It'll save your hands. But it helps you bend the track and I'll explain that hopefully in a bit and then just a regular 35 watt soldering iron you don't need a high watt uh, soldering iron to do any of that so print those out here is what they call a tie fret and you can see the little PC ties and when you cut them, like these say code 80, you cut them in half and then these, and then you use your nippers to cut them to length. It's really handy. They're all laser cut out. They're very sharp. Um, the stockade tool, you can see has a notch that you cut and you made it divvies out the bottom of the rail. We'll show you how that works. And they're, they're point form tools. And you can see this is a number eight for their slip switch, code 70 to 100. I'll show you how we demonstrate to cut the points on that. And also, I suppose also on that I can show you, is it has uh, the frog. So 
on each end, you can see the little holes that it's a dual purpose tool. And I also like this frog helper. And you can see this is for a code 70 to 83. And they give you, you buy them, you tell them what size frogs you want. This is a four, five, and a six. You get three, so but you have to get three in a row, like six, seven, eight, eight, nine, ten. Any anything like that. We'll go back to this. And what I did was I cut some rails and I put them in to the point form and the frog form. And I'll go back to me a bit. And once they're in there, you, you file them. You just have to get a bigger file than this, a big mill file. Good sharp file. And you you whittle away. You go one direction. And then you make your frog and your point rails. And what I've done is already made uh, the frog and then put it in the frog helper and soldered it together. And that's what I have for, for this piece. And this is the frog. This is the most important thing, actually, because everything when you're hand building a channel obeys the frog. Um, everything hinges on this part. The most derailments occur here at the points. The second most is at the frog. So you have to get the frog right. I build my turnouts from the inside out, you know. So I, I always do a frog first. And then I'll do the straight rail here because it's low-hanging fruit. And then I'll do the other outside rail because I can use gauges. And then we'll do the points and end up with the guardrails. So... You might as well get something soldered here quick. Use a little micro brush and dab the fast track solder or the, the flux on there. And if you watch any of the fast tracks videos, one of their biggest things is keeping whatever you're gonna solder clean. You know, they want the bottom of the rail really clean so this is pretty clean some people go to extremes i don't think you need that but but i line up that first one and i get it right over their template and i'm just going to tack it in place with one solder and hopefully my iron is still hot here and i'm actually going to put some solder on my iron There, now I tacked it in, and it's going to stay so I can go along to the other points and, and just solder them in. Let that solder flow right underneath. Should melt the flux and go right in there. You don't want to build up too much solder on up on the outside, but you can because we're gonna take that down later. I'll tell you a little tip here too. switch cameras here when you build your frog in the frog helper and you want to use extra solder in there you want to get as much solder as you can in there because you want that strong and file down and so while I'm holding the soldering iron to that some of the solder that's between the rails will melt down in there so now that we have our frog in there now we'll pick up the low-hanging fruit and I'll, I'll solder this outside rail. 
and now now we have to get the gauges out and I use the Micromart track gauges and I have an NMRA gauge which is very handy in a number of ways The solder is also very sticky. It helps the rail stay in place. So the first thing I want to be important is this rail I used, I cut the notch. And so I cut a notch right here. You can kind of see where it's red. And that notch goes here where the points are. And how that works with the the stockade and so I use a marker and when I lay down the rail I mark where I have the notch and then you put it in the stockade till the notch till the red just shows and then you will file that up and it comes out like this and then you can you can see the notch so that's the most important part about this one and once I get the notch where it's supposed to go tack that in then I can worry about keeping it engaged So there I got that tacked. I just let I didn't even touch the rail. I just let the flux melt and the solder float in there. And so now I'm going to come down to this end because this has to be engaged. And this is where I use these uh, Micromark Code 83 triangle uh, track gauges. So even though the uh, um, template may say one thing these gauges are perfect so i'm going to solder these in there these gauges have little notches where the rails go in and they come in different codes code 55 code 40 code 83 these are code 83 and uh put a little more Lux over here. All right, and there we go. And you can even check it with the old reliable NMRA gauge, especially at the frog. And that's perfect. Then I log in there. So now I'll tack down the rest of these and we'll have that outside rail all done. And just heat it up, let the flux draw the solder underneath. You don't want it to push on the rail or anything. And we're all set there. So now I like to do the other side. And this is where the rail roller can come in. Because you have that rail you do not want to put a flat a straight rail down and then bend it because the tension will always be there you have to take away the tension so as you can see this is pre-bent it's pre-stressed and so once again i'm just going to match up that notch down here because that's the point and then i'll go up here to where the frog is because i can gauge this and then I can gauge that and I'll set my point rails gauge to each one. But the 
that notch is the important thing. They have to use that rail thing. A lot of people take their hands and they can pre-stress it this way, you know, or do this, which is good too. I've done hundreds of them so I can do this, but you really risk the chance of slicing your finger open. Ask me how I know. So uh, the rail roller is handy. And if you do it by hand, take your time, please, please, please. Let's grab another micro brush here. I'll get this reel in, then we'll go to chat and do some questions because the point rails get a bit, a bit taxing. All right. So then we can put our gauges down at this end. Get that as close as we can to the frog. There we go. And we'll check that at the frog because that's ground zero and that's spot on. What about the radius benders? Advertise all the time in micro Markella. Yeah, anything that you can do to, uh, um, you know, there's a lot of people make homemade ones of these. It's basically roller bearings, and the device on the bottom moves this up and down to select the curvature. And I should show you sometime, one of the really cool things about this is that if you have a hunk of rail that, that you want to use or something and it's all wavy, you can set this up and run it through twice. It'll run it through, it'll be curved, run it through the opposite way, and you'll have a perfectly straight piece of rail. So it's it's an interesting tool from code 140 to 148. It's a lifetime tool. You, you only need one. You can see mine's, mine's pretty beat up. All right, so let's go back. Um, I showed you how the stockade works. So now we'll do the point form. So the point rails go, you put it in the ends, or like here's where it says frog and then points. So you tighten these down by hand and then get an, there's an Allen wrench that you'd use to tighten these up and go at it that way. So And then those are the um, the two frogs that you'd put together and make the frog rail. So the points are kind of odd. And I, I made one here. Here it is. Of course, I misplaced things. And you put it in there. And the device, you can see, has this long... When you put it in the end, your rail sticks out. And it shows exactly how far to put it out. And then you file and file and file. And the thing with the points, I will open this up, is when you pull them out, you end up with a very, very flimsy end here. And what you do is you actually peel it back. Now I'll go to my other camera, you can see here. So you peel it back. You can kind of see it's real, it's flimsy. It's it's not usable for anything. So you peel that back and you get your cutters. And then at that point, I'll do it the other way. At that point, you, you nip it off because that's wasted material. So now you have a really fine point. 
And this is where these Japanese little angled files are. They're kind of trapezoidal. And it's good for cleaning up and making making that point, as I drop things here, making that point down to as small, uh, sharp as a point as you can. So there's nothing that the wheels will pick on, you know. And that's what I've done here with the point rail. Like this is, we'll do the straight rail because that's, that's the low hanging fruit first. So the point here has been filed at the top of the rail down to a real fine point. And that's going to fit in there. And then it also comes back and it forms part of the wing rail, the guardrail on the inside. And the guardrail on the inside is measured with this flangeways portion of your NMRE gauge. So I'll get some solder going here. We'll continue building our switch. Put the flux down. And you you don't want to tie it in too soon because you want this portion has to flex. This is the this is the part that uh, uh, bends and puts stressors on. So I'm not gonna solder it to this tie. I'm gonna solder it back here. can get it in there and I want to bring that right up to the notch and then I'm going to see now I have what well, actually what happens so when I soldered here in the frog there's some solder in the way so I'm going to file that and being solder it just removes real easy it's just very soft So the rail can, can get right up into where it should go. And I can hold that there with a track gauge. And I'm just going to tack that in there. And then I'll make sure I got room here, which I do. So then I can solder in these other portions. And before I do that, I'm going to check my gauge here and make sure it's all good. And then I'll solder in the guardrail portion. Now you can even test it out. And if we had point throws, it would stay, but so. Now we're always, you know, almost done here. So now we'll put in the curved one, and the curved one comes back to the roller again, or your hands, to get the right angle. Now another quick point is where this bends right here. When you're bending the rail, you may have a longer piece of rail, but you mark it, and I use like a scratch all here and I mark it and then I use my rail nippers on the outside and I cut a little V and that allows me to bend that uh, that curve in it and then I also file down the outside so any wheels coming 
towards it this way are not going to pick it. It's, it's angled in. So we'll get that in there. And once again, we'll get the points where it needs to go. There we go. Make sure that's right where I want her. All right. Now you probably notice I didn't solder these over here because I'm waiting. I'm going to use that point rail as my gauge to perfectly put this rail on the outside in its place. So we'll get after these three ties and this one. This one you want to do very lightly because you don't want solder coming through where the where the where the points are gonna hit it. All right. Are we learning anything? Am I boring everyone to death? Nisi's here. Hello, Nisi. Okay. How many turns? Dan's Muller. Okay, so most of these tools are lifetime. The uh, um, uh, the the point form tool. This is the one that'll wear out the sides. and But you still should make hundreds out of these. I know people have worn them out because they don't want to file them and they'll use a motorized sander of some sort and that'll take extra wear off it. I've got, I've got some that are worn down because I've made probably five, 600 turnouts and double things like that. But if you buy their fixtures, like this or the ones of the switches. I've sold all mine and I've sold mine probably for only $10 less than retail because they hold their value. There is no damage to this. This is dirty. A little alcohol and a wire brush and it looks just like new. The stockades don't take, you know, much damage. So you're spending your time on, your money is buying the PC ties and files. A new file now and then. So, uh, Chad Martin, hand laid. It, it is in the long run, as you saw the prices of everything laying out to be laid out for this. If the two reasons to do this, like I said, one is the price. If you're going to build a whole lot of turnouts is great. I did it because I want the turnouts exactly as I need them. I always got jealous of seeing people's yards and it just flowed. And so I, I wanted to learn how to do it. And he, yeah, for a beginner, I would recommend a fixture. I can do no wrong telling you to buy a fixture and watching their videos. And, and like I said, you, you'll have the fixture. And if you built 50, 50 switches, you'd sell it for what you bought it for. 
we even tried in our little division to have a fast tracks library where if someone needed them we could loan it and check it out but yeah randall olson you know 500 no, you know no but like i said if you bought a fixture and learned the skills then you could make your own just like this and what i even do beyond uh, uh the templates beyond these templates which they sell they're free to download in every scale and stuff is i will go to the layout and lay down a piece of paper with a pencil on two pieces of flax track and i'd make number seven and a half turnouts number nine curved i can make anything i want i've had people dare me to make some things in fact in a model railroad hobbyist i had a blog where i made a y turnout that was narrow gauge with a standard gauge crossing going through both sides you know so yeah get the fixtures um learn the skills your my i always have the same one your first turn your first switch is going to look like it was built by a drunken monkey okay your second one is going to look like it was built by the high school shop class and they got a b the third one is going on your layout and then from then on I would always, if I, if I had my way, I would have saved my first one just to say how crappy it was to compare it to the new ones. Then you see growth in the hobby. Then you see things like that. So, so yeah, double crossings you can make and uh, Pirates of Model Railroad, see ya. Have a good supper. Um, yeah, you can have turnouts that you can't buy pre-built. Exactly, Randall, exactly. You can, if you need to fit into an area, if you need, you know, a three or three-way switch somewhere it's simple um this is a, this is a quick way to get your nmra civil engineering thing too and uh, uh i'll briefly touch on that because i know how much of a touchy subject the nmra is but this would qualify for an nmra merit award if i added some track to each end and powered it up because nothing they don't care about how it looks okay you have to have it built by you it has to be in gauge and it has to operate one two three that's all you need so if you went to a fast tracks clinic at an nmra convention and built these turnouts you could earn merit awards for this because they don't care that it doesn't have all the details you can add that later so um, I'll add the guardrails here quick, and then we'll go into the throws, and and then we'll uh, uh, have some more chat. I'll talk about insulating it and a couple of tricks I do. Now these guardrails are cut, and then the ends are bent, and then they're also filed down because you don't want any sharp edges catching your your flanges or anything like that so put that on the outside there get the whole uh, uh, NMRA gauge to use because you don't want that too close or the wheels will ride up check that because it looked like it moved all right we're all good there he's a little too weird move it over all right
We'll check it again. All right, we're good there. So now I'm going to take one more PC tie, and you can cut this to size. This will be the throw bar. And sometimes if you don't know which side you're going to use or if anything, I just use one that will stick out both sides, and then I can choose where I want to drill the hole, you know, for whatever method I'm going to use for switch throws. If you want to put your switch throw on this side or that side, however it goes, or a hole in the middle. Uh, but we'll do one, and then this, then we'll do the other. So you kind of only want to get the solder really on the inside of this. So you only want to get it on this side, and you kind of want to build it up because this is going to be the weakest point. You know, so once once we get attacked in there, then then I might build up some more solder, and you'll see that. That's the reason everybody at their operating session has their soldering iron warmed up. And then if solder got on the other side, once again, these little pinpoint files are just absolutely brilliant for that. Because that should go right in there. So then we're going to pull it up over here and put that against it. That keeps the solder from joining the other rail there. Okay, so flux in there. Doo -doo -doo. And clean it off. All right. All right, there we have enough room, I think, in there. This is, you also want to check your flange ways here. Yep. And, uh, make it through it. No holes. This is where that clear car comes in. And you can see if it rides up on down here on the frog if there's any bumps or anything seems pretty smooth that way throw the points there ta-da the next step obviously is you clean it up with a wire brush you knock down the solder but you have to cut the PC ties to uh, insulate it and I'll show you, you know, you have to cut all of these. You have to put a notch in, in these, right? Because because they're all, and I, I use the red. So you want to notch all those ties. And then over here, you got to do, do that as well. But you want to isolate this frog. So where I have the dual ties here, I'm going to cut the rail there. And the dual ties here, I'm going to cut the rails there and gap it. And then all of this will be, the, the frog will be isolated and in, in just on its own. And what I do is I cut those with a Dremel. Now I don't use a regular... Um, Dremel disc. I had pictures of it here in OBS. It doesn't want to show up, but I use these things. They're called the Deco AO Thins. And these are 0 0.009 thickness, you know. And they these are made for jewelers and I can't bring them up right now. They're made for jewelers, like if you have a gold ring that you need to expand, that you can cut that ring and you're not losing all the, that much gold. And you can just, I don't even know if you can even see how thin these are, 
But if you get these, get a box of them. They're kind of pricey. Get the big box of 100. Um, but they're good for gold and metal. They're for jewelers. They're for uh, um, uh, dentists, things like that. We'll use all things like that. So anything thinner, because the Fast Tracks originally wanted you to go at it with a jeweler's file, and that was such a pain. I just... <laughs> I, I couldn't I couldn't cut that so I had to find a different way and I saw that a couple of guys in the end scale were using these the deco thins and so I ordered them up yeah sparky that would that flat car for the GoPro you know it doesn't weigh anything though but I just want to know what a GoPro weighs you have to put couplers on it or you just push it around but I always wondered why they'd sell these at Micromark. And I think I had like store credit or something and I just ordered one. And then I, once I started building my own switches, it's been invaluable. You know, it absolutely showed everything. My, my first switches were terrible because I put the, the little bitty guardrails. I always put these too close. I wasn't using my NMRA gauge. And the wheels would just bounce over it. I'm like, well, what the heck's going on? And then I got that car, and I and I saw, oh, okay, well, this is this is good too. Yeah, you can use a hacksaw, Adam, if you have like the real fine jeweler's one. You take it out, clamp it in there, and go through about twelve blades. But I just rather use these these the deco thins. Um. What other questions we got? Okay, Drew's figuring out one turnout's 500, two is 250. Okay, you're doing math. <laughs> Bulk pricing. Then you gotta you gotta figure in rail and the PC ties you have to keep buying and um uh Chad, what's the lowest number of in HO I should use in the secondary and yard leads? Four. A uh, number four. I I don't know. No, anything lower would be mine, but I've I've had number fours. If they're they're built fine and early, you know, nice ones, Pico and, and the points and the frogs, you can you can pack a lot in a yard with some number fours and it'll look just fine. So I've built in scale, I've I just finished building about fifty in scale switches for someone in my operating group. And I've built HON three I haven't built O scale yet, but I've built a lot of HO, HO, and 3 and N. Yeah, the yard ladders. I, and I agree with you, Heath. That's what I wanted. I got jealous of. I'd see the magazines and all the, the really nice layouts had yards that flowed and they curved and the switches. And you could tell they weren't the Atlas or Walters. Here's a six, here's a six, here's a six. There's nothing wrong with that, but I just wanted. I just wanted mine to flow. This is, I think this is my original point form. And you can see it's worn out on the end edges here. It's, it's actually given up. This is a, this is a number four. And they come apart. And then you can see the, uh, the little gaps in there for the, for the, where the rail goes in upside down. But that one I've had forever. They make nice weights, like the stockade. So this is one for code 40 to 55. And then this one is 70 to 83. So you can get them in code 100. Code, code 100 is fine. I don't mind code if, if you paint it and weather it. Dual gauge. Yes, I've made I've made dual gauge. And HO and HO and three, and I'm making a couple more. We now have people in our Fremo group, Fremo Minnesota, that have narrow gauge, and I want to have some dual gauge trackage. So, uh, caboose ground throws. I have two on my layout because the turnouts, the switches, are right next to the edge, and I couldn't put in my throw rod mechanism. So, so do you have to drill a hole? Yes. I, I drilled a hole, Sparky. I drilled a small hole for an 040 wire in the throw bar. 
I can do it in the middle or I can do it on the side and then I can use uh, then for the for the switch machine I just have a detail part. Sparky, okay, cut the copper tie. How does each rail head move together? Okay, so great question. I don't cut the copper tie. Oh, crap. Probably have it. All I have to do, and I will see if I can hold this up nice to the camera. And you can see the notches. We'll go to the other one. You just you have to cut a notch in there. These are the ones that already come notched. And so, you know, if you took this file, you took this file and you and you went at it, you you just have to gap. the copper plating so you don't cut through the whole tie and that's why when I'm done with the cutting I go at this with an ohm meter and I side to side frog to this side frog to that rail frog to the, and I make sure that everything is gapped before it goes to the layout so all of those red marks that I said cut I, pro I misspoke that's notch you just want to notch a bit into the PC coating. You know, here you can kind of see the notches in that one. That's for like regular rail. But that will keep the gap for electronics. Thank you, Chad. Yeah, it's a little bit, a little bit precise. Thank you, Anthony. But you, you know, you learn it. It's you learn from mistakes. I think everything I've learned, I've learned the hard way. <laughs> um, so it's it's just a matter of going through things part by part by part. You know, and if you're getting frustrated, I walk away. I'll just do this. I can always come back and heat up the solder and iron. And the good news is, like with these, when you build them, you can fix them. You know. It's like, so, okay, well, geez, that switch isn't working. What isn't working? I can, I can unsolder, you know, this point rail and build a new one and drop it in. Correct, correct, Heath. I'm just gapping the surface of, of the ties. I'm just gapping left rail, right rail, and gapping. The frog is all one unit. So if you use a frog juicer, then power goes to, you know, goes to the frog and what a frog juicer does is instant it it detects the short and instantly switch switches the polarity you know the the bad part is i use psx for block protection and the psx is faster than the frog juicer so every now and then they battle it out but Everything is checked with an ohm meter, and then you go back, and lots of times I find that my gapping didn't do what I wanted to do, so I'll cut another gap or cut two. Yeah, everybody learns from their mistakes. That's what you don't. That's why my advice in my model routing is: if you're starting out as you are, and you keep keep a keep a couple of your mistakes, keep your first weathering job, keep your first switch, keep, just to look back and. If you cringe, if you look back at something and cringe, it's not bad. It shows that you've grown, you know. You know, I'm sure I'm going to look back at this and all the goof-ups and OBS and YouTube and Heath can laugh at me, but I'll, yeah, I'll get better, you know. I'll be like, Heath, 500 streams later, I might know where the audio button is, so. <laughs> um, I did prefer using a frog juicer and... I'm slowly coming around to changing it because I do use a double pole, double throw switch to throw my turn, my switches. Keep saying turnout. Um, and my best friend who used my method of turnout throws 
changed his to power the frog that way. And that's what I that's what I would rather do. But I do prefer the frog juicer. And also with today's engines, if you have current keepers, soundtracks, or keep alive's TCS, whatever, you may not have to power your frogs. But I'm kind of a belt and suspenders guy when it comes to my trains running. I'd rather have frog juicers and the keep alive's and not have my freight my trains stuck stutter anywhere when people come to operate my layout it's bulletproof nothing derails there's no electrical glitches there's no you know bad switches i i i take pride in that and trying to bulletproof my layout so yeah in scale i'd power the frogs and, and you can power them like like uh like sparky with the, with the with the tortoise is great for powering a frog and I'll show you when I get, you know, the next one, when I come back from vacation, I'll work on my, my switch throws and it'd be three little wires. And, and what it does, the double pole, double throw switch would just take the power from this rail and put it, you know, you know, whichever one it's going to. And then you could, you can save the money on frog juicers, which is kind of exorbitant, but I have a lot of them and. uh, I'd like to sell them. Nisi, what are Keep Alive's? Good question. Keep Alive's or Soundtrack's current keepers are a series of small capacitors that are added to a DCC engine. And what that does is if you have a DCC engine and any of the power cuts out to it, these capacitors, once the train's running, are building up capacity of electricity. So if your train goes over dirty track and where it always stutters, the keep alives and current keepers will power that right through that. It's kind of creepy because, <laughs> like, I, I, I'm out of my set of Atlas 424s that I put it in. I can shut off the power and they'll run for 30 seconds. I can run them off the track. They'll run down my workbench. I'll run them on carpet because they're still getting juice. And you can still control them. But uh, um, I don't have one handy, and I'm not going to take it out, but they're small little packets. If you go to Soundtrack's website and look up a current keeper, or TCS makes a great variety of them, it's a, it's a great device to bulletproof your... Uh, um, your trains, if you don't like them stalling and dirty tracks and non-powered frogs, but belt and suspenders, because I've got powered frogs and I've got current keepers. So my pants are staying up no matter what that way. And I, I will offer this to the community too. If, if you have a piece of track work you'd like to include in your layout, talk to me. If you don't want to build it, we can work something out. You know, this is this is relaxing for me. This is the part of the hobby I get. I come down and put on the smooth jazz and build out a yard ladder or build out some comp. I like that. The more complicated, the better. I like building diamonds and weird stuff like that, but it's actually things like that. Oh, the clear inspection car cutting the... Oh, cutting the acrylic. Yeah, that's about all this is with a couple of washers. Plexiglass washers and old trucks. Otherwise, get it a Micromark. Use your NMRA discount. They're not that bad. These are the hard things to find. That's, that's what I wish I could get some more of those. These are precious to me. But yeah, building switches is just a good turnout. Yeah, two-axle switcher. I got a little slideshow at the end. If you want to see more of the layout and more of the other stuff, I put it together. And uh, I'll let that run. And Heath, I can't thank you enough. Looking forward to building your Z-scale stuff and helping you get that golden spike. <laughs> and then someday I'll figure out StreamYard. And I can bring you guys online. Randall, you're welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Nisi. 
Thank you, Chad. Thank you, John. I will enjoy my vacation and I might even imbibe in a drink. Let's see how the wife lets me. I will, Chad. Heath, thank you. You got my number now. Call or text anytime. I'm, I like texting. I was taught that by my, my kids, so I'm a text fanatic. And uh, if anybody else wants to call me, send me a DM or something. I'll give you my number. You got any questions? Thank you, guys. Have a good night. Have a good week. I'll look forward to some sidetrack Sunday. I should be home Sunday night. Expect to see a new costume from Nisi by then, I'm sure. <laughs> Talk to you guys later.